Hi and welcome. My name is James O'Sullivan and welcome to this lecture on tongue diagnosis. Um, first of all, let's take a look at the tongue and uh, it's mainly composed of muscles. Um, it's covered by a mucous membrane and there are small nodules of tissue. These are called papillae and they cover the upper surface of the tongue. And between these papillae, you have the taste buds. And this provides our sense of taste. In addition to taste, the tongue also functions in moving food around the mouth in order to aid chewing and swallowing. And it's also important in speech. And this diagram divides the tongue, first of all, into lower, middle, and upper sanjiao. And these represent the cavities of the body and the organs that are contained in them, according to the theory of traditional Chinese medicine. And we can see here also on the left hand side of the screen, we can see at the root, this portion of the tongue represents the kidneys, bladder and the intestines. And the middle of the tongue represents the spleen and stomach, whereas the sides represent the liver and gallbladder. And the tip of the tongue represents the heart, whereas just behind the tip of the tongue, this represents the lungs. And we'll see shortly how we can identify various different disharmonies according to the presentations on these parts of the tongue. First of all, let's look at examining the tongue. And we use uh, suitable lighting and we ask the patient to stand next to the window and if possible to observe the tongue in natural daylight. Do not ask the client to extend the tongue for more than 15 seconds at a time as the tongue usually gets dry uh, the longer that it's left out of the mouth. When looking at the tongue it's important to note the following. First we note the color of the body of the tongue and the regions of course. Next, we note the shape of the tongue. Then we note the coating. Then we note the tongue moisture, if the tongue has moisture, whether it's moist or dry. And then we look at where, whether the tongue has shen, as we've discussed in class. There are some factors that affect our tongue diagnosis. First of all, highly colored foods such as sweets, candy, drinks or pastilles can affect the color of the tongue. For instance, licorice. Uh, spicy foods also affect the color of the tongue. Cane and pepper and curry affect the tongue by giving it a deep red color. Tobacco can make the coating of the tongue yellow. And of course, medicines affect the tongue as well. Antibiotics, for instance, can make the tongue appear peeled and patchy, as in the geographical coat. Uh, corticosteroids can make the tongue red and swollen. And uh, anti-inflammatories, for instance, uh, these can cause red spots on the tongue. And cytotoxic drugs, these create a very thick dark yellow or brown coating and can make the tongue body red in color. Antidepressants usually give a greasy coating. These are just some photos of various different tongues that you may come across when you're practicing in your clinic. And you can see that not all tongues are the same. Tongues present with various different qualities, as we can see in these pictures of various different tongues. First of all, let's look at a normal tongue. And again, pictures don't always do justice to the tongue, but here, a normal tongue, according to the theory of traditional Chinese medicine, should be a pink or pale red body, should have a thin white coating, and it should be moist. 
pathological indications on the tongue, first of all, let's look at the pale uh, tongue color. So in other words, the tongue is not pink, is not pale red, but is pale in color. And this is usually indicative of a deficiency of blood and yang. It can also indicate a deficiency of qi, where there's not enough energy to push blood up into the tongue. If the pale tongue is also slightly wet and swollen, it indicates a yang deficiency. And if it's pale and slightly dry, it's usually a blood deficiency. And of course, if it's a red body color, this indicates heat. The purple tongue usually indicates blood stasis. And if it's reddish purple, it indicates that it's a blood stasis due to heat. If it's bluish purple, indicates blood stasis due to cold. And of course, a blue tongue or a blue hue on the tongue is indicative of interior cold. Let's just look at the tongue shapes. And the first tongue shape we look at is the thin tongue. And this is due to a blood or yin deficiency. A swollen tongue due to dampness or yang deficiency. And the quivering tongue is a spleen chi deficiency or wind. Two completely separate patterns of disharmony. A deviated tongue is indicative of interior wind. And when there's, we find teeth marks on the tongue, this is indicative of a yang deficiency and or dampness. The coating is also important on the tongue. And the thicker the coating, the more prevalent the pathogenic factor, as we've discussed in class. And the shen that we see on the tongue is indicative of the vitality that we would see on the tongue or in the eyes of our patient or even on our patient walking in the door. This is a very basic introduction to tongue diagnosis from the point of view of traditional Chinese medicine. And I hope you find it useful. When we get into second year, there will be more on this fascinating pillar of Chinese diagnosis. Until that time, slantia.